Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now, the other day I bought an AMD Ryzen 7 1800X. This was AMD's first generation Ryzen flagship, costing $499 US dollars when it launched in March of 2017. Over the course of the last two and a half years, we've seen the price drop dramatically thanks to both the 2000 and 3000 series chips releasing, which themselves garnered impressive and improved reviews. Although the 8-core 16-thread 1800X was generally praised, it was the cheaper 7-series chips such as the 1700X, and maybe more so the 1700 non-X, that stole the show thanks to their cheaper price tags. This despite them being able to offer similar performance to the 95W 1800, with overclocking only emphasising this point. That being said, this then new processor, what some in fact called a true return to form for AMD, was far from perfect. Overclocking ability was somewhat disappointing and gaming wise it lost out to closely or cheaper priced Intel offerings. But looking back now, and it's clear that this was the start of what would be an ever improving lineup for AMD. I mean here we are today with the likes of the Ryzen 5 3600 as one of the most recommended processors out there, achieving solid scores across the board and offering superb performance in both CPU intensive tasks and gaming for less than $200. The 1800X paved the way for this exciting new platform and today I want to take a look back at where it all began. I've given up the specially reserved spot in my motherboard for the aforementioned 3600 and slotted the 1800X into its place. I've overclocked it to 4GHz, at least I started that way, and paired it with 16GB of 3200MHz DDR4. Ryzen likes fast memory, so the more megahertz the better. So as I mentioned before, gaming wise the 1800X ran into a few problems at 1080p as noted by some reviewers back in 2017, but AMD did say that over time things would be improved thanks to motherboard updates and game specific and Ryzen based optimizations. An article I saw on the Extreme Tech website confirmed that AMD had kept this promise and a year after launch it seemed like the now heavily reduced in price flagship still made sense as a worthy companion to any high end graphics card. I have of course paired it with my very hot and very power hungry Vega 64 today. Now I'm not going to sit here and pretend that the 1800X is going to give you a hard time. The mystery surrounding the question, can it still game, is almost non-existent as this is evidently still a more than capable part. Let's take a look at some gaming results in notably intensive games for example. Keep your eye on the CPU usage throughout. Assassin's Creed Odyssey managed to maintain a solid 60fps average with decent settings, the 1800X still offering plenty of breathing room. The figures were taken from actual gameplay but the footage here is from the built in benchmark. The Caspian level of Metro Exodus gave us no trouble. All levels will differ performance wise, this can be said for any game, but here we were seeing 90 frames per second on average with a respectable 1% low or minimum frame rate. Anyone who still buys a Ryzen 7 1800X will have a great gaming experience, especially if you don't have anything to compare it to. As long as you are seeing decent enough frames it doesn't matter if another CPU gets better figures, right? This processor and a decent GPU will guarantee you at least 60fps at 1080p resolution or 1440p depending on the title. It's the same with CPU based tasks. Before we do start making comparisons though, let's run through a couple of tests. In Premiere Pro you're still getting a fantastic experience, especially as far as rendering is concerned. Exporting a 4K YouTube video is also a task easily handled by the 16 threaded 1800X. Looking at the Cinebench R20 multicore result first and you'll notice that the CPU outperforms the modern day Ryzen 5 3600 by a little bit. This is just one comparative result I had on hand at the time, but there are more important comparisons to be drawn a little later, not just in terms of performance. In the single core test the 1800X still produces what I'd call a very respectable result, though I remember other reviews from years gone by stating that it fell short of closely priced Intel offerings, which would therefore prove to be better in lightly threaded workloads. 
You may have noticed that I returned the Ryzen to stock speeds, as my overclock did prove to be unstable, with infrequent yet irritating system freezes occurring. Overclocking stability is something now much improved with new Ryzen chips, at least in my experience. I mean half of it depends on luck of the draw, but when focusing solely on performance of the 1800X at stock, with no comparisons involved, it is still a chip that I very much enjoy. I had the Ryzen 5 1600 for a while, up from the 1200 Ryzen 3, because I couldn't quite afford the upgrade to the Ryzen 7 series in 2017. Now that it can be found for less than a third of its original price, it does sound tempting and I just had to buy one to play around with. But hold on because let's look at this realistically. Does it make sense to buy one these days? Well, brand new it's a hard sell. There are some priced fairly, but other retailers seem to treat it as a collector's item of sorts, pushing the cost way up beyond that of anything worth paying. Unless, well, you are a collector with money burning a hole in your pocket. You may as well buy a Ryzen 5 3600 and be done with it. The used market is where this could make more sense if you're willing to forego a warranty and in some cases an included original stock fan. Here are the average used prices of the 1800X in the UK, USA and mainland Europe as of December 2019. Not bad for what you're getting, but it's important to remember that the 1700 and 1700X can still be found for less and will do almost just as well. You should probably also consider the price of a Ryzen 2000 series chip, ones that are still sold new, for example the 2600X which is still a fantastic chip and costs about the same new as a used 1800X on average, and the 2700X, the X is superior to the non-X by quite some margin according to reviewers and this would certainly be the one to go for although it does cost a little more than the 2600X and a used 1800X though it certainly makes up for that cost in performance. It can sometimes be found for a very close price hence why I've included it as a comparison here. If we take a look at a few comparisons the difference especially gaming wise is sometimes negligible or non-existent or simply in the newer chips favour. Across the board we have a respectable set of frame rates and none of them should be sniffed at. It's fair to say that the gap will widen in certain AAA releases and this may become more apparent in the future but we'll have to wait and see how results vary. It's worth noting that the Ryzen 7 1800X's true potential still lies within content creation and CPU heavy tasks even today and as a content creator I'd still be more than content, ha, see what I did there, with this processor in 2019. I thoroughly enjoyed my time with it. Overall this video was never meant to prove anything, rather it was just a look back at where this whole Ryzen lineup started, a trip down memory lane so to speak. The Ryzen 7 1800X sure was something special and it's nice to see that it's dropped so significantly in price from its original RRP, though trying to find one new can be an expensive endeavour as we move into 2020. Over the course of the next year I hope that the prices will drop even more because I think that these may still be a tempting option if we do see another $50 euros or pounds slashed off the price for example and other online retailers started to be a little more sensible with their pricing too. Who knows when the next generation of Ryzen chips will also release and this could have an impact on the 1800X's price as well and possibly the general view towards it. As long as the 2000 and 3000 chips continue getting cheaper as well, well we might find that the 1800X may no longer have a place. I think the 1700 and the 1700X CPUs are probably more likely the ones to watch, but we'll just have to see how capable they are in another year or so. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you've enjoyed this look back at the Ryzen 7 1800X, an 8 core 16 threaded chip that really was the start of something pretty cool. So if you enjoyed this video, leave a like on it down below. If you didn't, leave a dislike on it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one where we will be finally taking a look at a pre-built Dell machine and seeing what you can expect inside of one of those things if you 
pay the cheapest price for it. Hopefully you can join me then.